Namaste and good afternoon. Greetings from all of us at Apollo Hospitals. This is Dr. Srinidhi Chidambaram and I am very happy to see you all again. I hope you've all been well and in the best of health and spirits. All through this month, we have been hosting a series of sessions that explain to you how to recognize and manage medical emergencies. A medical emergency or a health crisis is when you most need factual knowledge that can help you to take those quick actions, be fine-tuned to symptoms and not ignore early warning signs. This is why we have planned the series for you. Burns is a medical emergency sometimes and it can result from heat, overexposure to the sun or radiation or chemical or electrical contact. Burns can be minor, of course, or they can be life-threatening emergencies. The treatment of burns depends on the location and severity of the damage. And what one must remember is that the initial care and treatment of burn injuries significantly impacts the healing, the outcomes, the appearance, the function. And for most serious injuries, it is very important that you take treatment with a multidisciplinary team at a hospital which has a specialized burns unit. And it's very important that at any point of time, even smaller and less severe burns can require specialized treatment. So today, we are going to discuss the management of burns and what you should know about the right care, the right time, the right place. And when burns do occur, it's very important that proper treatment is given quickly and at the right place. To discuss this, I am very happy to welcome Dr. K.V. Lokesh. Dr. K.V. Lokesh is a consultant of emergency medicine with over 18 years of experience and has worked with different institutions of the Apollo Hospitals Group in his distinguished career. He holds a Diploma of Emergency Medicine from the Royal College uh, UK and also is a member of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine from the UK. Uh, he has expertise in handling various emergency procedures, critical care medicine, and is in charge of the emergency department, pre-hospital care, ambulance services, and also the hospital disaster management plan at Apollo Hospitals, Mysore and also a coordinator for the DNB emergency medicine courses at the Apollo Hospitals Mysore, has been trained and certified as an instructor from the American Heart Association for training in basic life support, advanced life support, pediatric life support, also a certified ATLS provider, certified in trauma management and ultrasound workshops. He is the chief of faculty and coordinator in first aid training for students, corporate staff, and the public. Regularly conducts awareness programs on emergency services and the importance of the golden hour to the public. I'm very happy to have you here in this program, Dr. Lokesh. Thank you so much for joining My us. My pleasure to be on this. Thank you very much. And I'm very sure that your session, your comments, and guidance will be very valuable in managing burns. So let's begin with uh, the basics on, first of all, you know, what is a burn? Um, as you already probably told in your initial introduction, burn is an injury to the skin or underlying tissues or underlying structures, mainly after exposure to an overheat or a cold, or it can be a chemical, or it can be a radiation, or it can be an electricity. So damage to the skin is uh, mainly the cause, what we call it as a burn, when it is exposing to the heat or the extremes of temperature, if you tell that, or it can be a chemical also. So, um, yeah, we did explain some of the causes of burns. So uh, what, what are the different uh, type causes of burns apart from actual fire? Yeah, in the, heat is the main reason. Heat is the one which causes. It can be a dry heat like a flame or it can be a wet heat like a boiled oil or a water or a, something like that. So uh, apart from the heat, it can be an extreme cold, what we call it as a frostbite also. Or it can be a chemical, maybe an alkali or an acid or whatever it is. Or it can be a radiation one. Or it can be a, a, a one which is electrical. Uh, 
electrical also one is because of the uh, electricity conducting through the body or because of the arc which is produced during the uh, thing uh, there is an arc which causes the burns to the face or extremity wherever it is wherever it is exposed so these are the possible causes for the burns we can take off uh, so what would be we have heard of you know different degrees of burns so what is what are the different uh, categories of burns in terms of their severity and how do you classify them really this is very important because uh, uh, how will be the management and what is the problem in the future depends on the extent of degree of the burns that is why we uh, broadly uh, tell them it is maybe first degree second degree and third degree which is very commonly uh, there may be sometimes when it comes to the doctor itself or a plastic surgeon which sees that uh, probably we will keep it simple we will take it as first degree second degree and third degree burns uh, that is what how we can classify the burns injuries and what what would be the uh, first degree and second degree i mean in okay. broad terms so uh, if you look at our skin the skin has a superficial and deep layer we call it as dermis and epidermis uh, and underneath that is the subcutaneous tissue and then comes our muscle bone and all those things where it contains blood vessel nerves and all those things. So, if only the derm is the superficial area of the uh, skin is involved, we call it as first degree. If the second layer is also involved, that is the epidermis and dermis both are involved, then we call it as second degree, which go on, goes beyond that. Means extending into the subcutaneous plane and the muscle or uh, bone or whatever it is, then we call it as third degree. Uh, because uh, this classification is very important because that tells you how long it will take to heal and what is your modality of treatment also. Uh, what would be the common uh, signs and symptoms, especially in terms of, you know, in what stage should, I mean, when what symptoms are there, should a person consider that it is an emergency and they have to seek urgent medical help? Uh, in the burns, I will tell you, somebody who is having a burns which is more than his palm size, in any way of the body, should definitely seek a doctor's advice. Should not delay in going to the hospital. Apart from that, any burns happening on the face, on the neck, on the hands, or on the joints, should require an uh, attention by a good doctor so that the complications which can occur in the future can be avoided. That is very important. Apart from the these things, only the burn thing, the other things which you always have to keep in mind is somebody who is having a difficulty in breathing after a burns, somebody is having a harshness of voice, his voice has changed, he is unable to breathe normally. These are the ones which without delay should seek the medical advice as early as possible. So, um, what would be the, you know, the initial uh, first aid that has to be done at home before, you know, they seek medical help? Because many times uh, one always, you know, gets confused because, you know, like, do you, do you pour water on a burn or do you, you know, just leave it alone and just rush to the hospital? So, there are many ways of dealing with it and some of it may not be right. So, if you could tell us what are the right uh, measures to take if somebody has been burnt somebody is having a burns the first and foremost is to remove the source whatever wherever it is happened however it is happened the source of uh, that heat is coming that has to be removed uh, that is the first and foremost thing why i'm telling this is for example somebody who is wearing a cloth is caught fire and if you uh, 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 if the fire is also gone also, the, the amount of heat which is there in the cloth yeah. which can transmit into the body and the burns which is there which may be extending into the deeper structures. 
that is why it's very important to remove the source means remove the cloth as early as possible if the cloth is stuck please don't peel it off just cut around that and other part of the cloth you remove that that is the first and foremost thing the next important thing is to preventing the heat from going into the deeper structure is the first aid in the in the treatment of the burns that is the most important thing the heat if it goes more and more deeper and more and more problem for the person so how to prevent this heat to go not to go inside more inside is to cool it down cool it down means how use simple water pour plenty of water so that it cools not that you just put a water and leave it should be an irrigation what we call it as complete keep that water to flowing on the burnt area for some time until it completely cools down because uh, the temperature which is there inside may not be neutralized with the once you apply only once you apply the water if you continuously applying it again and again definitely the heat which is there is not going to conduct inside and so that will decrease the energy so these are the two important first aid things i will definitely recommend one is to remove the source and the other is to cool down the area or it can be a chemical or chemical burn also which also needs to cope a amount of water to irrigate that area so that uh, the chemical which is washed off and the injury caused is very little for the person and what are the usual steps taken in the hospital so once they come to the hospital what what happens in the emergency room yeah this is very important the first first four four most thing in all emergencies we'll always look in uh, in order of a b c a b c is our airway breathing and circulation the first foremost thing for us is to see that there is no life threatening problems for the person okay we assess the airway is there any airway passage burns or there any breathing difficulties because of burns which is encircling the whole chest may hamper in chest expansion so that can cause respiratory problems so those things are the first things which we look at then probably the next important thing is to depending on the degree and the percentage of burns which they occur they require uh, fluid replacement as per their body weight and all those things that is the most important thing we do with added to that is the analgesia or pain control for the patient is the most important thing which happens in the initial stages of a burn uh, then probably it will move on to more finer things which uh, which will help us in preventing the long term problems for the patient that's the main thing which happens as soon as the patient comes in uh, what about uh, any plastic surgery and all that when does all that happen the, the graft or... no those things as soon as our abc is over should be involving there is no point in i'm take the advice after 24 hours or 48 hours i'll wait no that is not the, the new trend is to get them involved as early as possible because there are a lot of new innovations in treatment of the burns yes whatever you do early is the best for the patients like something like collagen dressing which is very popular nowadays which decreases the pain uh, heals the wound very fast there are a lot of things which a plastic surgeon can do in the initial stages itself so that is why there is, should be as soon as you manage your abc you should be calling your plastic surgeon to get them involved as early as possible let's talk a little bit now about uh, the types of burns as in the different sources so is there a difference really between the electrical or the radiation chemical and thermal burns or they are all treated as burns uh, most of them uh, are burns are treated like the same but there are few important things you have to keep in mind when you are looking at the electrical burns uh, 
Uh, electrical bulbs may not appear as bad as others to look upon, but they are they can cause injury very deep in because of the electrical energy which passes through the body. Okay, it it can denaturate the protein which is there in our body, which is there in the muscle, uh, everywhere it is, which which can denaturate this protein for which it can cause an injury to our heart, injury to our kidney, which is not so easily visible from outside. You may, you may see a small entry wound and an exit wound, which is from his hand to leg or something like that, but the, 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 the way which the electricity has passed could have destroyed a lot of organs on the way. Uh, the most important one is it, uh, it causes the hemolysis, which uh, hemolysis of the blood, which goes and uh, settles in the kidney and causes the kidney failure. Which, which if you don't recognize early, you end up uh, losing the patient's kidney. The other important thing is to cause what we call it as arrhythmias of the heart. Arrhythmias means the heart rhythm goes away. Uh, so, which can cause a sudden cardiac arrest or sudden death for the patient, which has to be recognized early and treated. So, that is why electrical burns is somewhat different in managing from the others. And other thing is also, in electrical burns, the outside burns seen may not be huge enough or which may be looking very small or a meager one, but uh, close observation will tell you that they will develop something called compartment syndrome. What happens is the muscle which is inside is getting necrosed, which is got swollen, which causes pressure inside, which causes the blood vessel to get damaged, nerve to get damaged. So there are a lot of things which uh, if you don't uh, foresee it, you may miss it and you may end up, uh, patient may end up losing his limb or life. So that is why electrical burns, you should be more uh, proactive and uh, more vigilant also. Another thing in first aid is, I think, uh, you know, what not to do as well, uh, which often complicates the situation. So could you tell us what you should not do when encountering a burn? Uh, there are a few important ones which you should always remember. If somebody is having an airway involvement, uh, who having a uh, noisy breathing, what we call it as stridor in the medical terms, or if there is, you can see a visible suit in the uh, mouth or the nasal cavity, those are the ones, the first and foremost is never allowed to have anything to drink or eat for those fellow, those persons which can cause aspiration. That is the most important thing which everybody should follow. The other thing is, um, uh, if the burn is quite significant, big enough, don't apply any home remedies. These are not good uh, and also mask the uh, symptoms and signs which doctor could elicit very easily when they go to the hospitals. Uh, I tell them not to apply any cream or any powder or any, it's very common to use some home remedies like turmeric and all those things which are, which are not good at all and can be catastrophic. So these are the very important things should not be done. And also I told you when somebody, something is got stuck into the burnt area, never try to peel it off. It is also very important. You, you may cause the damage more more. And the other important thing is somebody will think that it is hot, you put a cold water or nice water which is helpful. Actually it is not. It is the room temperature, just a normal water is the one which is there. Otherwise there is a reflex vasospasm means the blood vessels get constricted and you are, that area gets deprived of the blood supply, that is very important. So these are the things which should not be done at home at all. Finally, uh, 
we already discussed some of the complications of burns. Uh, uh, are there any further uh, aspects that people must be aware of? I think we've discussed most of it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, anybody who is having um, more than 30 to 40 percent of the burns, they tend to get a lot of complications, which, uh, which are very, in, in spite of having a very good burns unit, uh, in spite of a very good uh, tertiary or quaternary care, which can't be prevented because the skin is an area which covers the whole body and it's a very good defense for the whole body, which is breached now. So they are uh, bound to get infections, probably third day, fourth day, fifth day. So these are the very common ones, uh, which, which are very troublesome for the patient and the doctors also. Apart from the infection, there are a few other important things which I have told already. One is the arrhythmias, other one is the kidney failure, other one is the other things are muscle necrosis, uh, which causes the deformity of the joints, restriction of the movement of the joints, uh, uh, restriction of the movement of the chest. So these are the common complications which uh, occur in a birth patient. In a chemical birth, uh, the other important things you should always keep in mind is uh, uh, sometimes inhalation can cause long term lung complications like we call it pneumonitis, uh, which may take uh, months together to heal and to become normal. These are the things which should be always kept in mind. Finally, uh, are there any special ways in which burns in certain special groups need to be addressed, for example, in babies and young children or perhaps in pregnant women or the very elderly? Yeah, uh, mainly it is uh, the vulnerability, well, especially children or geriatrics or, uh, uh, or it can be a pregnancy. Their physiology is slightly uh, altered from the normal. So you have to have a case specific how to deal with them, uh, their fluid management, uh, the involvement of the specialist. For example, if it's a pediatric, you need to have a pediatric intensivist who is taking care of or a pediatrician who is taking care of, apart from your plastic surgeon, because of uh, management of the electrolytes, fluids, antibiotics, all those things, there are a lot of scope, of, uh, uh, scope for the uh, doctors and the team. Like that in the geriatric also, uh, uh, probably one 15 to 10 to 15 percent in an adult young male may not be having so so much mor morbidity, but in an uh, elderly person, which can uh, be very catastrophic for the those kids. So it should be case specific and uh, to the situation specific, but you should be. Uh, over vigilant when you come across these type of vulnerable patients. Is there anything else you want to add, Doctor? Otherwise, we will conclude the session. Uh, um, fine. The, the important thing is to be aware and meet the doctor at the earliest. Any burns which I already told that more than your palm size definitely requires attention from the doctor. And uh, the final thing is don't try too much of home remedies. Please allow the doctors to do whatever is required for the patient. Thank you, doctor. So dear viewers, I hope you all found this session useful and do write in, uh, in, your, uh, in the Facebook page, in the comment section or post a message to us or you can contact us at any time for the clarifications. But as the doctor said, do not delay seeking medical attention if there are burns, especially if they are bigger than the palm size. And also remember that the care begins right at the site of the burn injury. What you do and what you don't do is very important. It's always advisable to seek medical attention as soon as possible because delayed treatment would always cause more severe complications that could have been avoided if only uh, the, when, uh, the, the patient has been brought to the emergency or to the doctor at the earliest. 
So do remember that 1006 is our emergency helpline always available to help you and guide you through any emergency. Take care and stay safe. Thank you and namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you.